Welcome to this tutorial that will walk you through how to extract and 3D print patient anatomy from a DICOM file. Um, this tutorial uses free open source software, namely 3D Slicer, Mesh Mixer, and Cura um, to actually prepare the 3D models. Um, and in this tutorial, I'll be using a newer method that's been developed uh, within 3D Slicer to segment anatomy, and that is with the segment editor. Um, so let's get started. So first you'll start by opening 3D Slicer. You'll import any DICOM data that you uh, want to view and segment. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering all of the pertinent patient information uh, with that white box that you, that you can see um, over the DICOM browser just to protect their information. Um, but once you get that file imported, you'll select your series of interest. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be segmenting out a hip and femur, just the bony structures. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm going to use the NRRD file, which is de-identified, so there won't be any sort of patient information on any of the um, modules. Um, but again, we'll be segmenting out the right hip and right femur. Uh, so instead of going to load DICOM data, I'll go to load data and then select that NRRD file. Once we have it loaded, um, you'll see that we're in the standard four up view, which is the three traditional radiology views, as well as that blue box, which shows the 3D model. In order to see it though, we'll have to go to the volume rendering module uh, select any one of the presets. I like CT Bone. Um, we'll show the ROI, which will allow us to crop down the volume to our region of interest. And then we'll need to click that eyeball next to the volume to actually see it. Just give the computer a second to load. Uh, changing the shift will allow us to better visualize the anatomy that we want to see. Um, this visualization won't ultimately affect our segmentation, but it really allows us to better crop the volume and to kind of see generally what we're working with. Um, so I'm just using the, the mouse to kind of pan, zoom, uh, and rotate around the um, model, just trying to crop that volume down to the smallest one possible that still um, for sure includes all of the anatomy that we want to segment. Once we're happy with the way that we've kind of cropped down that volume, we'll go to the crop volume module and um, just click apply. You'll see the red, yellow, and green um, windows all kind of zoom in on the area that we've um, gone down to. If you want, you can always make sure that you're including all the, the anatomy by going into each of those um, windows and scrolling through. Next, we'll open up the segment editor and uh, begin to add the segments that we ultimately want to have. Um, so for this video, again, we'll be segmenting out the femur, the hip, and then you'll want to include a label um, or a segment that is absolutely everything else in the, the model. First, we'll go to the paint tool, make sure that the diameter is one that's uh, appropriate for the um, windows we're looking at and slowly go through and we'll start with the femur here but you can start with any of the structures you want and go through um, that anatomy. It's a lot quicker to use the sphere brush because it allows you to um, label multiple um, slices of the DICOM image at once. However, you have to be careful because clearly like we did here, um, you will sometimes label things that aren't actually um, part of the, the structure of interest, just because you can't really see it. As you can see in the, the 3D model window, you can see a sphere that represents the paintbrush, but it's kind of cumbersome to constantly be scrolling through it and ensuring that you're um, going to be included in the bone. So I think just using a slightly smaller sphere um, is the much safer move. You can also always go to the outline view for the label so that you can better um, visualize what is labeled and what isn't. Again, make sure if you're using the sphere tool 
to constantly be scrolling through all of the slices to make sure that you're not labeling other structures. When you're creating these seeds with the paint tool, you'll want to add as many as possible. And um, obviously, the, the more that you add, the better the segmentation will ultimately be on the first pass. Um, so investing some time now can really save you time down the road. But at the same time, you don't necessarily want to be labeling absolutely everything uh, because um, that'll be quite uh, time intensive. So you kind of want to let the computer do as much work as possible um, for you. In order to best segment out anatomy, especially structures that are really close together, it's kind of why I've chosen this hip and femur, because you have the femur abutting the um, acetabulum, um, you'll really want to get the label as close to the edge of the bone as possible. And again, the more seeds that you ultimately give the computer, the better that's, that first pass of the segmentation will ultimately be. But don't worry, we can always go through and edit the segmentation to make sure that we uh, have captured everything. So once you've labeled the two or how many ever structures of interest you have, you'll want to go through and label everything else. Um, so for this particular segmentation, that'll be all the muscle and any bony structures that aren't the hip or the femur. Um, again, the more data the better, but don't go uh, too crazy with spending a, a ton of time. I've also found that adding a label between two structures um, allows them to be segmented out much, much better. Um, it really gives the computer an idea of where that femur ends um, what is in between them, and then where that hip starts. Um, the computer will kind of automatically figure out, oh, I guess everything else is the, the um, less bright structures, the femur is this brighter structure, um, and then the hip's the other bright structure, but on the other side of that everything else label. Um, this um, might be a bit of a time-consuming process, um, but it's certainly faster than manually segmenting. And again, just the more data you give it on this first pass, the less uh, editing we'll ultimately have to do later down the road, so it might actually save time. If you're wondering how to zoom in like I have on that yellow window, just go ahead and right click and then drag down or up and that'll allow you to zoom in and out of the out of that window. All right. So once you're kind of happy with the seeds that you've placed, you'll go to that grow from seeds tool and then click the initialize button. Give your computer a second to load. Um, and as soon as it's done processing, you'll see that those uh, yellow, green and brown regions will have kind of filled most of the screen. As you can see, Slicer did a pretty good job of figuring out what's hip and what's femur, um, but we will always kind of have to clean up a little bit, mainly because uh, we kind of segment out incorrectly. Um, you'll be able to see as we go through these slices that most of the, the segmentation errors are actually because I originally labeled structures incorrectly, mostly um, because of that uh, sphere tool. Um, Again, that sphere tool is really nice to, to make this process as quick as possible, but it can also cause a lot of problems and ultimately make it a little bit slower um, if you kind of uh, go over anatomy that shouldn't be included. Um, so I've sped up this cleaning up process a little bit, and you'll see that if we have the auto update turned on, you can just kind of go through and relabel um, structures kind of as you see fit, and the computer will rerun that uh, grow from seeds tool in that area that you're relabeling and showing it what should and shouldn't be labeled. It's a good idea to always use um, the three views. Uh, I find that certain views are better for things like when I'm working in between the, the femur and the acetabulum, but you always want to make sure that you're checking in on all three views because sometimes uh, segmentation will look really good in one of the views, but then you'll switch to a, a different one and you'll find that it actually doesn't look quite as good in that view. So here I am kind of scrolling through, making sure that our yellow view looks good. 
it's looking pretty good so far. That's okay that the, the coccyx and the lower lumbar spine aren't included because that's not something that I'll ultimately be 3D printing. But for example, here you can see that brown sphere that I um, accidentally clipped some of the femur with. So that's why the computer thought that that femur was uh, kind of that everything else label that I included. So I'll have to go through slice by slice and tell it no, that uh, bony structure is in fact part of the femur. This process is uh, sped up on the video just so that you all don't get too bored. Um, but uh, know that, I mean, all in all, an average segmentation of, say, a hip and a femur takes maybe uh, 30 minutes or so, probably a little bit less um, as you become more experienced. So again, we'll kind of scroll through this view one more time, make sure that we're pretty happy with the way everything's segmented. I've found that this next step sometimes is pretty computationally heavy, so going to one of the views sometimes makes the computer freeze a little bit less. So we'll go back to the grow from seeds and then click apply. And that's going to kind of finalize those label maps that we've created. So next we'll open up the segmentation module and then we'll export the models by going down. Export should be clicked and then switch from label map to models and click export. And what that's doing is creating the final models. You can see now that in that 3D window, that brown, um, everything else label has popped up and you can't see a whole lot else, but that's okay for now. So we'll go to save, save our femur and hip models, make sure to change from VTK to STL files, choose your directory. Again, I find it's really nice to keep the same patient anatomy all in the same folder. And we'll open up Mesh Mixer so that we can edit these uh, models a, a little bit. So you'll select a part of the model, go to Expand to Connected, and then you'll invert that so you're selecting everything that's not touching that big model of the hip, and then you're able to discard it so that you don't have any sort of noise or little um, other portions of model that you don't really want. You can then remove any portions of the model that you're not terribly interested in printing. So for this, let's say we just want to really focus on that acetabulum, then we can um, slice off with the plane cut tool the rest of the hip, that superior aspect, just because we don't really need it. Um, it'll just increase the print time and not really add to um, our surgical planning or the educational purposes that we'll use this model for. Once we accept it, we'll want to make sure that that top surface that we're cutting is going to be filled by Mesh Mixer. Most of the time it does a pretty good job, but every once in a while I find that it doesn't actually close the surface, so just check it. Go into the inspector to ensure the model's manifold. With this method, it typically is, um, but you just want to check that. Once it's uh, determined to be manifold, then you can export the final STL. I recommend saving all of those 3D Slicer and the Mesh Mixer files so that you can later go back and edit them if needed. But for this tutorial, I didn't want to take up the space on my computer. For the final step, you'll open up Cura or your uh, slicer of, uh, not 3D Slicer, but your, your 3D printer slicer program um, of choice. You'll want to make sure that the model's on the build plate, kind of wherever you want it. So using those uh, translate and rotate tools, the lay flat tool is really nice. And then just make sure that it fits in that build space. And uh, once you have the model positioned correctly, you can run through and make sure that all of your print settings are to your liking, prepare that G-code file, and then you can get it printing.